and welcome to Broken Entertainment. Uh, I was going to do a video, and, and I may still release it, it's done, I just haven't edited it yet, but I was going to do a video on uh, the final fight between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and may yet do that, but I, I wanted to talk about something a little more positive, and I just finished listening to the audiobook for The Rage of Dragons, which is an amazing fantasy novel by author Evan Winter, and we'll get into him in a minute, but I'm going to be spoiler-free in this review, as I usually am. I'll, I'll try not to go into anything. This book, first of all, don't read it, go listen to it. Then, you, then read it, that's fine. But it is performed very, very well. Um, absolutely fantastic audio performance, and it really lends uh, atmosphere and credence to the words in, in an amazing way that it's really, the whole book it just becomes this awesome performance. You've got to get, first of all, get this book. Second of all, go listen to the audio book. Uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200. I will start now by saying, I don't recommend this book. I expect you to go read it. <laughs> okay. Um, not really, but I, I, it's a fantastic book and you absolutely, uh, will be missing out if you love fantasy and especially if you want something new with great pacing and really interesting world building and great characters this book has all of that, and it's really some really interesting things going on, not just in the book and not with the characters, not just with the world building, but the author in general. So if you're tired of uh, medieval-based, medieval Europe-based fantasy novels, go read this book. This book is African-based. It's still kind of a feudal system, but it's an African-based world building with African-based races and color, or uh, not colors, um, African-based everything, religions, names, cultures, world building. It's fantastic. And I'm not one of those people who's tired of medieval European fantasy. I love medieval European fantasy. And I've struggled with other fantasy uh books i i've had two from china uh one of them i really liked one of them was okay this one really just absolutely incredible and it's a debut novel and it occurs to me i don't think i said the name of the book it's the rage of dragons uh the burning book one this is one of those books that to me really helps me not just decide, okay, what do I want to learn uh, when I'm working on my fantasy novel? What what do I want to learn that I can say, wow, that's, that's great. Uh, that is a great way to build things. That is a great way to approach things. Not just what do I want to learn as a writer, but the the pacing was incredible. I just came off of a book that I was disappointed in, two books that I was disappointed by, and they were okay, but the pacing was slow, and especially on the first book, I'm like, ugh, get, you know, come on, let's go. This book drops you in, and it just takes off, and it's great from page one, and in the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, you know, he does this whole, uh, women and men instead of men and women thing. And usually when I see that, it's being done for political reasons to imply uh, something about gender relations and, and, and f stuff like that. And I was like, okay, is this guy going to get, you know, political? Is he going to get, is he pushing this kind of thing? And then uh, I realized as more of the world building unravels that, it's done that way because it's a matriarchal society. So it's done purposely uh, not to drive home some sort of ideology, but to show you how the world is structured even before the book really shows you how the world is structured. And 
the fact that this is a debut novel is amazing. If you didn't know going in that this book was a debut novel, uh, you would be like, oh, this guy's written like 100 books. You know, <laughs> this, this is like right up there to me uh, for different reasons. It's right up there with Brandon Sanderson's later writings, Way of Kings, and so on. Just great work. Compelling characters, awesome lore. The world building is really, truly unique. The The way the magic system works and the way you learn the information is very well done and you're like, oh wow, this is... You know, you, you kind of slowly learn it with the character and then you start to slowly learn uh, secrets that the society has been actually keeping about it where you think, oh, well, you know... Um, I don't want to get too deep into it because I don't do spoilers, but yeah, there's there's layers to it. It's it's really great. The dragons are maybe the weakest part of the book, if I can say that. Um, dragons play a very prominent role in this book, and they're pretty much dragons, and they have their own interesting bent to them, but yeah, they're more or less dragons, and that's fine. I love dragons. Dragons are great. I'm not saying it's a bad part of the book. It's just compared to their stuff, meh. Uh, the culture is Bronze Age, which is also an interesting take because usually you're dealing with steel and all that kind of stuff. So uh, very interesting in that regard as well. So I'll, I'll read you the blurb here and then I'll I'll read you about the author because I think he's really interesting. The... Uh, one of the reasons I say the audiobook is so good, I don't know. This Onayame, I think I'm saying that right. Could be wrong. Hopefully I'm not. Uh, great job. Fantastic narrator. And um, because he himself is African, it really lends to that atmosphere and world building of this is a world based on uh, African feudal kingdoms. Okay, very well done. Love the way that it all comes across. That's why I say go listen to the audiobook because the narrator is not just there, not just conveying the story. It, he's really a part of the world building almost because of his voice and the way he carries things. Um, excellent job. I think any time you can say that about a narrator where it becomes like part of the world building... So, uh, here we go. The Omehi people have been fighting an unwinnable war for almost 200 years. Lucky ones are born gifted. One in every 2,000 women has the power to call down dragons. One in every 100 men is able to magically transform himself into a bigger, stronger, faster killing machine. Everyone else is fodder destined to fight and die in an endless war. Young, giftless Tao knows all of this, but he has a plan to escape. He's going to get himself injured, get out early, and settle down to marriage, children, and land... Only he doesn't get the chance. Those closest to him are brutally murdered. His grief swiftly turns to anger. Fixated on revenge, Tao dedicates himself to an unthinkable path. He'll become the greatest swordsman to ever live, a man willing to die a hundred thousand times for the chance to kill the three who betrayed him. Just, this is everything, I can't, uh, it's hard to review it without going into to spoilery details. Tao is a great character. He's very flawed. He's very relatable. He's very, very interesting as a person. And I think a lot of elements of his character are those kind of things that you can tap into on some level. It's like, yeah, I get it, man. And then other times you kind of want to strangle him. But that's great. It's it, That's great character writing when you feel that kind of a connection to the character. Supporting characters, also good, but Tao is the best character, the best written, the best, um, the most empathetic, the most sympathetic character in the book by a lot. And you will absolutely be able to relate to him. There will be something that you can relate to him. So, uh, then the author is Evan Winter, who is an absolutely... Fascinating individual here. Born in England to South American parents, Evan Winter was raised in Africa near the historical territory 
of his ancestors. He always wanted to be a writer, but went to university first, tended bars in two countries, became a director and cinema photographer, whose work has been viewed more than 500 million times online, met a couple of common in the process, was threatened by UK mobsters in a case of mistaken identity, worked with the wonderful A-list celebrities, unbelievably talented unknowns, and became the creative director for one of the world's largest infrastructure companies. All before realizing that the words in his head would never write themselves. Before he runs out of time, he started writing them. More to the point, he grew up reading fantasy, loving fantasy, and believing that it's our stories that make us who we are. He remembers being 14 and sitting on his bed for countless hours in the summer, reading Robert Jordan with Sarah McLaughlin's music playing in the background. He remembers being transported to brilliant worlds of magic, heroism, conflict, and wonder, and it goes on from there. This is the kind of writer I like to see. This guy is driven, he's talented, he's steeped in the genre. He's not just interested in it, he's steeped in it, he's wrapped in it, he grew up with it. These people make for the best writers, the people that are just, this is their genre. This is what they grew up with. I, personally, that's what I write. I grew up with science fiction. I grew up with fantasy. I grew up with superheroes. That's the kind of stuff I love to write. It's not just people writing things to make money. Now, here's the interesting thing to me that's not said here, but I found elsewhere. Rage of Dragons was originally, for everybody out there thinking, oh, self-publishing, you know, that just means you can't make it. Self-publishing means you're not good enough. No. The problem isn't self-publishing. The problem is, is the pipeline and the gatekeeping in traditional publishing. But this guy uh, got picked up by Orbit and re-released. Wonderful book. Going through the sequel now. Wonderful, wonderful book. Absolutely, if you like any of this stuff, fantasy, dragons, alternate base settings, meaning not medieval Europe, writers who are steeped in what they're writing, go out and get this book. Absolutely. Um, it's an epic fantasy novel, and it really, really has so much going for it. So much interesting world building, such an interesting magic system, great characters and story. And the plot is very straightforward. It's very simple in the begin in this book. So you get to just focus on all those other things. Now, it's not predictable. That's not what I mean. It's just not overly convoluted either. I'm sure it is getting more complex in the second book. Right, because it's a series, but absolutely recommend this book. So let me know if you've read the book, what you think of it. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you next time.